All right. So on the top of your notes, you should have uh, week 27, Cold War and decolonization. Let's go to the second section. We're going to start with Cold War, though. What? Oh, popped up. Okay, so next to Cold War, you need to write 1947 to 1991. Okay, that's, the, that's how long the Cold War is. Okay, you're going to write its causes or how it came about. Its causes, there are going to be five of them. The first one is historical tensions between Soviets or the Russians versus the West. An example, who can give me an example of the Russians fighting against the West? Oh God, people. What is an example of the Russians fighting against someone from the West? William. The Great Games. The Great Games, perfect example. The Crimean War also should be an example you could have come up with. So they just have bad blood between them anyway. Can we agree? So that's one cause. Second cause, the Russians <coughs> wanted to keep all the territory they collected from Stalingrad to Germany. So the Russians believed that they were entitled to every land they conquered and took back from the Germans. Now think about it. If you look at a map from here, if you look at my map super quickly, the Russians feel like they're entitled to all of this territory over here and for most of Germany. Is that what we want? Do you think the West was thrilled about this? About the Russians expanding their borders that significantly? No, no, no. Okay. This third part is the Potsdam Conference. Potsdam. Literally spelled Potsdam. Okay. Potsdam Conference. The United States tells Stalin, we have an atomic bomb. Stalin is pissed. Now, about four months later, we're going to drop it on Japan, but we tell them at this meeting. Why do you think Stalin is so pissed that uh, we have the atomic bomb? Why? Peyton? Does that make sense in a powerful country? No. Not at this point. We're still fighting. Everyone's, everyone's miserable. We've had the technology for a year. And Stalin asked us his first question. How long have you had it? And he said, we have to say a year. We could have used it for a whole year. Why do you think Stalin is pissed? It makes logical sense. Think about it. Morgan. He wanted to end the war faster. And if we had this technology, guess what we could have done it? In Stalin's mind, we could have ended the war with Germany significantly faster if we used this bomb. So Stalin's like, I lost 60 million people in this fight, and you could have ended it earlier. So I think you understand where he comes from on that. It makes logical sense. The fourth one is that Stalin wanted a second front opened in the east immediately. Stalin wanted a second front opened in the east immediately, and he didn't get it. Why would he want a second front opened? Come on, people. Devin. So the German military is weaker on the two fronts? Yeah, and one. like, guys, yeah, you just saw Enemy at the Gates. How is the Russians doing against the Germans? Not well. Not well at all. And they're the only ones fighting on the eastern front for a very, 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 very long time. And this is going, he's going to be like, why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you helping me? The fifth reason is going to be capitalism versus communism. The fifth reason is capitalism versus communism. Now, think back to your second point, I think it was. It was that Russia wanted all the territory it conquered on its way to Germany, correct? What do you think Russia's going to do with all the territory? Make it communist. Make it communist. Now, as America, do we want tons and tons of communist countries? No. Now, why would Russia, and you're going to want to write this down, why would Russia want to spread communism? They're the only communist country in the world. Why do the Russians want it? Think about it. If you're the only country in the world, is it easy or hard? Hi. Have you ever felt alone in the world before? Like you are a weirdo and no one can understand you. I have felt like this 
many times in my life. Maybe today. With that being said, oh, do you like my shirt? Isn't it amazing? Make America. Isn't it amazing? I love it. I'm so sorry. Anyway, let me get focused back on here. Stalin wants more communist countries because it makes more, uh, it would make a stronger command economy, or communist economy. If there are multiple countries that follow the same ideology, right, Nick? It's easier to defend it. Can we agree? So he wanted more countries because then it would be easier to be communist. Now your next heading after the five is things to know as we discuss this Cold War. Things to know. First thing is, Cold War is a proxy war. Cold War is a proxy war. Does anyone really guess what a proxy war is? Is it? Uh, is it a proxy war? Basically, where like you don't really fight, but then you set up other conflicts to fight. So yeah, you use other problems. examples to go ahead. Now. You're going to write, the United States and Russia never declare war on each other. Why? I don't think you have it. You don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to connect. Okay, so, as soon as you write that down, put your pen down for two seconds, and I'm going to explain. The United States and Russia never declare war on each other, because immediately after uh, we use the atomic bomb, the world, world War II is over. We create the UN, which we're going to get to here in a minute. We're going to talk about this, and you'll write it down here in a few minutes. But as um, soon as the UN comes in power, all the other countries in the world are like, whoa, United States, you hold the entire world hostage because you have this technology and no one else has. It makes sense, correct? Now, I'm on the team that has it, so I'm comfortable. I'm an American. We have it. We're not going to use it against ourselves. I'm comfortable with it. But if you are even English and French, would you be uncomfortable with the United States being the only country with this technology? It makes logical sense. So what happens is we, as the United States, are forced to give our atomic technology to England, France, Russia. Why Russia? They're an allied power. Yes, we had to give it to the rest of the allied power. So why did the United States and Russia not declare open war on each other, Kylie? They both had atomic bombs. You need to understand that. They both have atomic bomb technology. No one wanted to see the end of the world. So they use proxies. Proxy, and you need to write this down, is when... The United States and Russia use other conflicts to fight against each other. Proxy war is when the United States and Russia use other conflicts to fight each other. But keep in mind, they never declare war on each other. Now, who can raise your hand and tell me a conflict, a proxy war? Devin. Vietnam is a proxy war. What do I mean? Uh, what's another proxy war? You should write example. Vietnam. Colton. I, uh, Afghanistan is going to be a better example. Iraq is a little bit different, and we're going to get to them. They're, we're going to have problems with Iraq. The Russians are going to be in Iraq, but it's not exactly a proxy war, but it's not a terrible example of one either. So you're not wrong, but I like clean examples, and Vietnam is a nice, clean example. What's another one, people? Evan. Korean Peninsula, okay? In Korea, who is supporting the South? Yes. The United States is supporting the South. Who is supporting the North, Koreans? Russia. So what that means is, is that in South Korea... Right? We're going to give them guns, weapons, bombs, planes, whatever they need, and say, go. And then we stand behind them and push them forward. Then the Soviets are standing behind the Koreans and saying, here are your weapons, here are your guns, here are your planes, go. And they push them to it. So we never directly fight the Russians, but we are playing war with the Russians. Does that make sense? Is everyone okay on a proxy war? Yes? Feel like we got it? Okay. You need to know 
Um, the cold, and I would put cold in quotes, means that no open warfare. Cold in quotes means there was just no open warfare. Now, you don't have to write this down. I just want you to hear it so you can kind of start seeing the connections. Because 1947 is when World War II ended. When does the Cold War begin? 1947. So Eisenhower is the uh, general of the, of the European front. And as soon as we win and beat Hitler, Hitler's dead, we've, Germany surrenders, we've taken over, Eisenhower turns to Truman, who was our president at the time, and says, uh, President, I would like to take our military right now and go fight Russia. There's no way we're not going to fight them. We're already here. Let's go fight them. And Truman's like, no, 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 no. Let's not fight them. Everyone's happy the war's over. Let's not do that. Okay? Who was right? Eisenhower was for sure. But I think we can all agree why Truman wouldn't want to do that. So just so you understand, as soon as World War One II uh, is over, we go straight into it. Okay, so that's all the basic stuff you need to know off the top. Here we go. So on the top of your notes, you need to write, next heading is UN. Okay, you need to know, UN is created in 1945. 1945, okay? It is made up of every country, minor exclusions, which we're not getting into. You can deal with the government, okay? And it has five security members. You need to know those five security members are the most powerful ones. Is Zimbabwe a security council? No. Okay? So, in the UN, if I'm Zimbabwe and I want to make a big change, okay, I stand in front of the General Assembly and say, hi, I'm from Zimbabwe, I want this change. And everyone says, hello, Zimbabwe. We heard you, Zimbabwe. So if the whole General Assembly wants it, then they pass uh, like, what would, like a law kind of thing. They pass this whole notification that this is what we want. Then that piece of paper that they pass the General Assembly goes to the Security Council. These five players, England, France, U.S., Russia, China. You need to have that down. U.S., England, France, Russia, China. So, then the resolution, that's the word I couldn't come up with, the resolution that the assembly passed is then presented to our Security Council. Then the Security Council votes on it. Majority wins. Five members, whoever wins, that's what passes. That is how things are decided by the UN. So, who are the most important people? Security Council. They control pretty much, eh, pretty much everything. Uh, but there's some diplomacy in it. Now, you need to know under UN, okay, the UN are going to facilitate the creation of Israel, Pakistan. One of the first things they do is create Israel we'll get to here in a few minutes. So I just want you to see that connection. That's it. Okay, your next heading is the Truman Doctrine. Okay, now, the Truman Doctrine is signed by President Truman. Truman. Look at you people. Okay, so there's two things you need to know about it. Sorry, sweetie. First thing you need to know, that Truman believes democracy should be everywhere in the world. You need to know that. Okay. It's the Truman Doctrine, he believes democracy should be found in every corner of the world. And then you need to know he created something called containment of communism. And you need to have that down. Okay, so the Truman Doctrine. The Truman wrote this down on a piece of paper and then declared that containment. Containment means of communism. Any country, you need to have this down. This is you put a huge star next to it. This is the reason why proxy wars exist. Uh, any country that adopts communism any country that adopts communism will then be invaded and fought for by the United States. So, essentially, are we telling every country in the world they can't have communism? 
So guess what we do to any country who converts to communism? The United States gets involved. Now, do we have the right? No. No, no we don't. It should remind you of what other doctrine that we're telling other countries this is what we're doing, you better just do it. The Monroe Doctrine. So you should be making those kind of parallels as we're going through. Uh, you can should put another star, and this is causes proxy wars. Okay, it just causes proxy wars. Okay, so that the reason why we get involved in Vietnam is because Vietnam becomes, which we use what doc, document to justify our intrusion. When Korea goes communist, what do we cite as a justification for our intrusion? German doctrine. Okay, so now the Marshall Plan is your next heading. I hope you see these are kind of the justifications for all this Cold War conflict. Now, the Marshall Plan is the plan to create uh, to rebuild Europe. The Marshall Plan is the plan to rebuild Europe. Now, it's a United States plan, it's an allied plan. You need to acknowledge that. So, they now keep in mind at this point, Russia has plowed through Eastern Europe to get to Germany. Uh, the Allies have plowed through France to Germany. And now they're just staring at each other. And they need to figure out how to divide the world. Are we going to let Germany exist after this? They caused two world wars. Are we going to allow them to exist? That's what the Marshall Plan is trying to figure out. How can we keep the Soviets happy but not give them too much? How do we allow the Germans? Because punishing the Germans, did that go well round one? No. So the Marshall Plan is trying to figure this all out. Now, who do you think, who do you think thinks he's getting screwed? Stalin. Sounds like, oh, hell no. So he comes up with his own plan. And you need to know. The alternative plan from the Soviets is called Com Comi Con. Someone said, oh, Comic Con? Damn it. <laughs> Now the only thing I can think of when I think of it, now I'm just going to call it Comic-Con. So, you need to know that Stalin comes up with his alternative, which is the Council of Mutual Economic Assistance. Now, in the Marshall Plan, it's led by the Allies, so what economy are they pushing? Capitalism. Capitalism. The Soviets are pushing? Communism. Communism. So immediately, do we have a challenge to the Truman Doctrine? Yes. Is this going to increase more tension? Yes. And that's the Marshall Plan. So, because tension, uh, so write military alliances. This is like super huge. And you're going to write, because tensions are growing, alliances are created to prevent war. And I would put prevent war in quotes. Because when you have alliances, has that led to wars? Yep. Yeah. So, it's supposed to be there to prevent war. Um, so, because tensions were so high, alliances were made. The first one is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And you need to have it put a big star next to it. This is two huge concepts, people. You need to know it's also called NATO. Have we heard of this before? You need to know NATO is not the UN. Everyone's like, oh, NATO, the UN. No, they're not the same thing. Uh, NATO is North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It was created in 1949. I don't really care if you know that. It is led by the United States. Okay, Other countries that are in it, I do want you to hear some of them. I'm not like including Finland. Finland's in it, but no one gives a shit about Finland. No offense if you're Finland, but they're not really a war power. Uh, so, you need to know the United States, England, France, reconstructed Germany. So, is this Nazi Germany? Hello? No, this is reconstructed, which is more democratic. Obviously, say Germany is democratic. What? Germany, like, makes it that way in Germany after. The United States, we occupy it and we are allowing them to put it together. We still do that? No, we're not in there anymore. No, no, we leave in the mid-50s. We're there for 10 years. Yeah, we're there for 10 years, and we rebuild that to make sure that Nazism isn't allowed to flourish again, and we have to do this all over again. The same thing's happening in Japan. We have American troops stationed there for 10 years, and we help them rebuild. When 
we say we help them rebuild, we allow them to rebuild in the way we want to, correct? That is American friendly. Now today, are the Japanese good friends to the United States? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because we've cultivated a government we liked in Japan. Guess what we did in Germany? We cultivated a government that we liked in Germany, and then once we were satisfied they weren't going to start this again, we left in about ten years. Oh, oh, in Germany? It's more yeah. like Britain. I know they don't have a monarchy, but it's a parliament system. It's like France. They have a chancellor still, Angela Merkel. She's the most powerful person in Europe at the moment. Uh, yeah, in Germany is a weird case. They, they get down, and then they come back. And then here we are at the top of the power chain in Germany and Europe again. So you need to know that United States, England, uh, United States, Canada... Don't hate on the Canadians. They had more people die on D-Day than anyone else. They always show up. Every war the United States goes to, guess who has our back? Canada. Canada, every single war. Guess who was the first people to join us after September 11th in Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan? Canada. Canada was the first. So, I like making Canada jokes too. But, I always know it with a happy heart. Anyway. So, North Atlantic, those are the big countries you need to be familiar with. Then we have the Warsaw Pact. Okay, the Warsaw Pact is the Soviet Alliance, and you need to know that. It is the Soviet Alliance, okay? It is made of the Soviet Union and its satellite countries. You don't know that term, but you're going to learn it right now. So, see ya. Just kidding. Oh, how exciting! We got so far. Yeah, you did, actually. Oh, gosh. All right. Have a good weekend, guys. Are you at least interested in this stuff? Yeah. Because, like,